So hi, David. Hey, how's it going? We are here at uh, Buchler and Friends uh, in downtown in the warehouse. It's quite nice to be here. Um, and we're going to look at your MIG series yes. uh, vacuum tube modules, right? Yes. So this is a whole series of modules. It's a VCO, mixer, VCF, VCA, and a noise source. And all of these modules are designed around these new old stock tubes that were originally used in uh, Soviet fighter jets from the 80s, hence the MIG name. So how did you how did you come across these uh, these the stock of these old so, tubes? So uh, I was working on a set of modules and met another guy who had designed a bunch of circuits based around these modules. Um, that's the ElectroSurf. So these are a collaboration between his tube designs, and then. We worked together on the functions of the modules, so he did the tube circuits, and I've done the, the layout and the production for manufacturing, essentially. So, um, should we listen to one of them, then? Should yeah, we, listen we to can give a... Tell us, what we're, tell us what we're listening to. Okay, then. so I'm going to turn this up. This is... We're, right now we're hearing the VCO. We're listening to it from the... There's four different outputs. There's a, essentially what's a saw output, a pulse output, a smooth output, which is the, um, the raw output or the saw output, uh, and then a folded output, which basically takes the outputs from the tubes and runs them through this vacuum tube and then into a folder. So you can hear right there, that's a little bit of the, the folding. Essentially, the way that these modules work is it uses these two tubes, and each tube contributes half of the waveform. So it switches at audio rates between this tube and this tube, and that allows us to change the balance between those tubes and essentially shape the waveform from there. Uh, some other unique qualities of this is we actually have a resonance on the oscillator. So I can turn that up. is unique to these being tubes. Um, we've got two different flavors of that there. Um, and the offset here and the balance also contribute to that. We're also only hearing the, the folded output right now, but you can plug it into. So that's more of a, essentially a sawtooth type of output. Yeah, you could hear the resonance much yeah. more clearer on that, actually. Actually, we're overdriving the mixer a little bit, which is kind of rounding everything off. But yeah, so that's essentially the VCO. Uh, the mixer, I don't think I have to do much explanation, but you can hear the, the tonal changes you just get as that volume goes up and down. Uh, the filter is interesting. There's some... Is that the resonance that we're hearing there? Yes. Right. That's the resonance in the filter. Um, and each one of these, essentially, the tubes in, in all of these can be overdriven. Um, there's like a, a phase control on the VCF that allows you to essentially... It, there's a... <laughs> it's hard to explain, but with, with the fact that we're using the tubes in these, there's a lot of different possibilities that we break out to the front panel that you wouldn't necessarily find in a normal filter or a normal oscillator or a normal VCO that um, allows you to alter the timbre quite a bit. So, let me just so slightly. give a, a quick demo of sort of sounds you can get from that. Um, VCA is similar. We've also got um, sort of a, a resonant control in the VCA that allows you to overdrive that with different tonality in that, as well as just functioning like a normal VCO. It also actually can function as a ring modulator. Uh, it's, it's a VCA, but it 
it functions also as a four quadrant multiplier, so we have a Y input that can run it as um, a ring modulator. Uh, the last module, let me turn this down. I'll see if I can. So this is what we're hearing now is the noise module. All sorts of different varieties of pitched uh, through white noise. This can also, if I plug in a uh, sequence to it. Sorry, that's a little loud, but. Yeah, really uh, strange kind yeah, of. Uh, yeah, yeah. You'd almost get, you know, some kind of like video game type sounds out of it through just straight white noise and all sorts of stuff in between. So. So, um, if you're, uh, okay. obviously these are, uh, new old stock. So yeah. do you have a lot of stock of them? Because, uh, we have about 1500 tubes at the moment. Uh, we've been purchasing these as we can, uh, from Ukraine, which is pretty much the only place that they're available at the moment. So. Uh, they will probably be a limited edition item, unfortunately, uh, just because that's that's just the way it is. <laughs> so, um, do you, do you, do they do they need like any special kind of power requirements? No, because a lot of like uh, tube in Eurorack tends to run like it t tends to use quite a lot of power, right? Yeah. No, these are actually uh, a perfect tube for doing stuff in Eurorack because you can see they're size-wise, they're really good. Uh, they run off of a really low power, so I'm running this entire case just off the stock tip-top Mantis power supply. Um, the most that any of these tubes are running on is 24 volts, so that's very easily done within Eurorack and doesn't take, doesn't take hardly any power. Brilliant. And uh, do you have a kind of final price, or are they kind of oh. still in...? in so price-wise, not totally determined yet. Um, they're not out yet, probably six months or so. They're, they're very close. Um, probably 400 and lower is, is what we're going for. Brilliant. Well, David, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.